Did you know that asset allocation is one of the most important decisions you will make in investing? That's right, asset allocation will predict how much return you end up getting more than any other factor. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what asset allocation is and how to figure out what is right for you. Now, my name is Andrea. I bought my first stock in the sixth grade and I haven't looked back. So in these videos that I share my decades of experience of investing. So let's dive right in with what exactly is asset allocation. In its simplest form, it is the different mix of investments that are in your portfolio. That's it. But this is one of those things where you can't really just ask a specific question. There's a lot of yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. So in the rest of this video, we are going to dive into all of the hidden stuff that you have to consider when picking out your asset allocation. Now, before we do that, let's cover why asset allocation is so important. Vanguard did a study, and I think it actually pulled from other studies and everything, but I'll put a link below if you actually want to look at it. But 88% of your returns can be predicted and are determined by your asset allocation. So if you and I each have the same asset allocation, and you have a totally different set of stocks, and I have a totally different set of stocks, but we have the same allocation of stocks to bonds to cash, our returns will be almost close to identical. Not exact, obviously, but amazingly close. And so that is one of the reasons that asset allocation is so important. The second reason is that asset allocation really helps ensure that you're diversified. When you are not diversified, your risk of losing money just skyrockets. All right, so there's a couple of ways that you want to approach picking out your asset allocation. There are going to be three things to take into consideration. Your time frame how long you have to actually get to your target, your risk tolerance, because just because you have the time to be almost all stocks doesn't mean that you have the emotional ability to watch those ups and downs. And then the third factor is your actual goals. And all those three will play into how to decide. If you haven't set your financial goals yet, go check this video out before we move forward. All right, so taking those into consideration, there are two approaches. One is kind of the standard rule-based rule approach, and that is there's this formula where you take 100 minus your current age, and that's how much you should be invested in the stocks. The rest should be bonds. Now, there's a few issues with that. <laughs> One, it assumes we are all on the same timeline. It assumes you are saving for retirement <laughs> and not in the 529 or, you know, saving for a house. There's all these different things <laughs> that go into account. It also is kind of assuming a standard lifespan. In fact, some people have started talking about now it should be 120 minus your age. And so while that can be really beneficial for a nice, easy, clear cut decision, it doesn't always serve your needs. And that really is truly what investing is about is serving your needs. Now, when would that actually work? Well, if you are on a standard traditional path, and I'm putting that in air quotes because our standard traditional path is actually relatively new in the history of the world economies. The whole idea of working to 60, retiring, and then getting a pension is actually a very new concept. And so if you are on that traditional path, then the 100 minus your age can be a really great tool. Now, with that said, let's go on to another alternative in order to figure out exactly what your asset allocation should be. 
that other approach is time-based horizon. So I'm going to give you two examples of um, the ones that I actually am, have right now. And that is my son's college fund and my actual retirement fund. Now, my son is a sophomore in high school, so I will need to access his 529 funds within two and a half years. So that has a completely different time horizon than my retirement, which I'm not planning on retiring anytime soon, so I can base it on, call it 20 years. So I should not have the same asset allocation for both of those by any means. If his fund was still 100% in stocks and the market tanks and it doesn't come back for three years, I am scraping to get enough money to get that first year taken care of and allow the money to come back to cover the rest of the years. Likewise, if I invest my retirement account, like I'm going to touch it in five years and I've got 20, then I'm not getting the growth that I need. And so you want to take your goals that you have and figure out how soon you need the money. Now, I will put some links below to some graphs and charts so you can kind of see different options as to what your horizon is. But the way that I look at it is anything within that five year period needs to be broken into two groups, the first three years. And for most of that, this is going to be probably an unpopular opinion. I think it should be in cash. Those first three years should be in cash. So for that 529 of my sons, we actually have the first year sitting in cash right now, um, assuming an in-state school <laughs> portion. And then you go to that little next category, call it three to five years. And that is where you're going to want probably your bond allocation. And then beyond that, you can be into stocks. So that is one example of kind of where you want to move as you're getting closer and closer. Now, for my retirement, I am almost exclusively in stocks. The allocation is really high, but I also have a really high risk tolerance. So you might not want to do 80, 90% in stocks, and that's where your risk tolerance comes into play. But let's say that you have standard risk tolerance, whatever that is. I'm not really even sure there's a thing as standard risk tolerance. Anyway, okay. Um, okay, so we got 20 years till retirement. You might want to go with a you know, 70, 30 split, 70 stocks, 30 bonds. You might want to go 60, 40. And then slowly, as you are getting closer to the 20, start moving into more and more bonds. So those are the two main ones. Now, there's a third one that really doesn't have a name, but I'm going to call it your risk tolerance and your approach to investing. So I said I'm overly <laughs> into stocks. Part of that is because there is a portion a specific account in my retirement funds that is dividend investing. And so that will never transition into bonds because I am designing it and setting it up that I won't take the stock out. I will live off the dividends. So when you're considering asset allocation, you have to keep in mind that yes, you want it to be safe as far as if the stock plunges, you have time for it to come back, but you have to take into consideration other factors like how am I actually designing my portfolio? So I will always have a higher percentage of stocks because I am a dividend investor. And so you have to take considerations into effect like that too. So I know that was a whole lot of if this, 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 and this. And that's one of the reasons I actually get really frustrated with mainstream media because there's so many nuances to your finances that the more you know in detail, the better decisions you make. Anyway, side, side rant there. All right, so how do you actually figure out what's right for you? Okay, so what you need to do is go back to your investment goals. Look at your goals, separate them out by the goals. Don't treat your money as one giant lump sum. Treat it as this is my retirement, this is my house, this is kids college, this is vacation. And using the goal and how many years you have towards it, you wanna look at two things. 
one, your return needed, and two, your risk tolerance. So if you have your retirement goal and you've done a really great job of saving or had some great luck at the very beginning and you only need a return of 5% to reach your goals, you might not take the traditional allocation of 60% stocks, 40 bonds. You might go more bonds. Now, if you have that a higher risk tolerance, even though you might only need 5%, you might go for more because you can handle the ups and downs and increase that nest egg. Now, if you're looking at that retirement account, but you need 10% return, you are gonna have to be as high on that stock side as you can emotionally handle. And I keep bringing up the emotional risk factor because if you freak out with the ups and downs and end up selling because of that, you're gonna wipe out any benefits that you have done for yourself by getting the right asset allocation into place. So make sure that when you are picking it, you are comfortable with those ups and downs. In the link that I'm gonna put below to the Vanguard stuff, they have a fantastic chart that shows you if you're 100% bonds and then up the scale to 100% stocks, what the range is in your profit and loss and what the average is. So you can go look at that when you're looking at it and go, okay, can I emotionally handle the drop that comes with 100% in stocks? So I think it's like negative 45% was the number. And if you, would freak out and sell everything if you saw that you lost half of it all then you can't be 100 percent in stocks and so you want to take that into consideration if you need a 10 percent return but in order to get that you have to be 90 percent in stocks but you won't sleep at night you got to find out another alternative whether that is extending your time horizon or increasing your savings you've got to take that into account and so you want to do that with each and every single one of the accounts and just to kind of touch on the college example, that's another one. You probably don't want to go super risky <laughs> below your kid's college fund. <laughs> that would not be good. <laughs> um, so you want to take that into consideration as you're doing all those. And then as you get closer to your goal, you will make changes in that allocation to ensure that the money is there when you need. This is called rebalancing. I will cover that in a different video later on. But what it basically means is once a year or whenever a market big swing is triggered, you're going to reallocate to get back to the percentage target that you want so that you're on track. At the same time, as you get closer and closer to that goal, you are going to alter your your asset allocation in order to make sure that you have the funds necessary. Now, the other thing that I want to tell you and to make this super easy, because I, I hear you freaking out, especially if you're new to investing, there's a very easy way for you to manage this asset allocation and not have to make sure you're getting the exact right stocks in um, so that you're perfectly diversified, which I'm going to do another video on diversification so we can go into detail on diversification. But what you can do is determine your allocation and then buy an index fund that is total stock market and then buy an index fund that is total bond market. And that way you basically just balance in between the two of them. And by doing the total, you've got your diversification covered and you're set to go. All right, I hope that helped you understand asset allocation. If you still have questions, drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. And if you do want to catch that next video on diversification, click subscribe so you're notified when it is here and ready to go. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today.